All right, I got my boards back. Uh, they came out great. Thanks again to PCB Way, who gave me an award. I am the partner of the year. Woohoo! So thanks again to PCB Way for supporting the channel. They're really great. They give me anything I want. Uh, really great service. Um, and then you guys buying um, boards uh, that I have on my share section helps me out. Um, and uh, so we will put together some boards. Now these are going to be pretty scary boards because, <laughs> because of the little tiny part. I can't even probably see it even if I zoom down. Yeah, that little part there that is the digital capacitor, it's two millimeters by two millimeters, 12 pins. And the pin spacing is, the pitch is a uh, half a millimeter. So yeah, pretty tiny little part. So I'm hoping having the solder stencil and everything, I can, I can successfully <laughs> complete these boards. So we'll give it a try. Uh, but yeah, the boards look out good. You know, I, every once in a while, I'll just try a different color. I still like green though. I'd probably just should just stick with green, but I've decided to make this one red. Um, but uh, yeah, got MSI Dog approved. And uh, again, we have a microprocessor and an OLED display that goes on top of that. And then the filter will be above that. So it's looking, looking good. And again, it's a 0.8 millimeter board to make the impedance correct. All right. All right, well, that was uh, nerve wracking uh, loading these boards. They was right at the limit of my shaky hands putting all the parts on these boards, so. But they did turn out beautiful. Uh, I, am, I am happy with the way they turned out. Everything looks pretty good. Um, you should always inspect your work, make sure that everything, there's no solder bridges or you're not missing anything. Now on this board, um, everything looked great except for one pin under U2. Looks like it may be missing. Um, so that's the only thing I need to worry about. Um, I'll need to test that and see if that's a problem or not. Otherwise, the boards look, boards look good. So it looks pretty good, all put together. Um, I did put the uh, programmer, the, it's not a programmer, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, USB to T, uh, uh, RS-232 converter. Put that on here and I actually programmed a little uh, co uh, code in here so we can see if actually it can do something. So let's put 3.3 volts on it. And uh, there we go. So that's running a little program and it can zero out with the button stuff. So anyway, all of the digital stuff is working. What we have to worry about now is, uh, is the analog uh, section working. Now the way that this uh, filter works is it, it's a, a bandpass filter where it should work all by itself, but you can in, in, introduce additional capacitance using these little uh, digital caps, okay? But we should be able to, uh, let me turn the spectrum analyzer on and let it warm up. Um, we should be able to trace this thing out and see if it actually, if it actually is a, uh, actually is a filter. So at least we know we have a starting, a starting point. We shouldn't need any power. I would imagine the uh, capacitors would kind of just not be there if there's no power applied, but I might be wrong. Give it a try. Maybe we can power it up and see if it's any difference when you power it up or you don't have it powered up. I think to use these things, you just have to write a, a, a six bit word to each, each device to set some type of capacitance level. So I have a spectrum analyzer, input, output, tracking generator. And uh, so let's uh, take a look. Uh, let's see frequency. We want to stop at say 300 megahertz. 300 megahertz, there we go. And uh, let's go ahead and turn the tracking generator on. Ooh, and already we see that looks like we're doing something here. Uh, there's zero dBm, so it is, it is doing something. Uh, peak is at 155 megahertz, so that looks reasonable. So it is acting like a filter. Let me put the uh, power on it, 
see if it's doing anything different. Ah, it is. It does change shape, and if I take the power off, it, okay, it goes back down, all right. So we'll leave the uh, power attached here. We'll do a peak again. Uh, next peak, there we go. 153. Wait a minute, let me do a peak here. Let's turn these off here. Uh, uh, marker, sorry about the stupid dryer. There we go. Peak. Peak's at 166 now. So it kind of bent it over. Kind of a weird looking thing. But anyway, it's not programmed. But it is acting like a filter. Now the thing that disturbs me though is from the paper that I read, the filter shouldn't maybe maybe had 10 dB of of insertion loss or something like that. And this one's got like 20, 20, 60 B of insertion loss. So yeah, that's not good. Um, so I, I, I did wrestle with this for a while and I decided to uh, go back to basics. Okay. And let me show you what I did because this just doesn't feel right to me. All right. I loaded up a second board but this time I didn't load any of the digital capacitors. It's just the raw filter by itself and um, none of the little tuning, tuning capacitors. And like I said, it should act like a filter, um, just maybe not the right frequency filter. So let's try this one. So it removes any obstacles that the digital capacitors might do. So now we have a kind of a dumb filter and let's take a look at that one. And yeah, it's bigger. So now we've got about a 15 dB loss. I need to go back and read that paper and see what type of loss that we're, that we're anticipating. But that one looks reasonable, maybe. I mean, I would have liked to see a, a passive filter like this have no more than maybe a 5 dB loss and stuff. Thing. But I don't know, maybe 10 dB is reasonable. I don't know. I'm not an expert in this stuff. So anyway, uh, I think we're, and this one is peaking right at the same point, 166. Um, so uh, I think we can start try, trying to program the, um, trying to program the capacitors. I think what I'm gonna do is write a program to just tickle one of them, and then we should see kind of an on off thing, you know, max value, min value, max value, min value, and see if the filter does something at all that we're actually talking to the, uh, talking to the capacitor. So that's my next step, write some software.